a lifetime of gambling, one murdered nanny, and a killer lord on the run. Today's video is about Lord Lucan, who murdered his family's nanny on a cold dark night and vanished into thin air. Richard John Bingham, the seventh Earl of Lucan, was born in 1934 and inherited his father's wealth at 30. So, how did this nobleman go from racing power boats to brutally attacking a 29 year old nanny? Stay tuned to find out. Lord Lucan married Veronica Mary Duncan in 1963, a union that initially seemed to paint the picture of a happy and successful family life. The two had three kids together and made 46 Lower Belgrave Street in Belgravia their permanent residence. But darkness leered in the aristocrat's life and he parted ways with Lady Lucan in 1972. However, things got really dark when Lucan lost the custody battle for his children. After this happened, he started spying on Lady Lucan to the point that it became an obsession which led to the gruesome events of the night of November 1974. It was a regular night at the Plumber's Arms Bar until Lady Lucan barged in seriously injured and screaming for help. The head barman, Derek Whitehouse, later recalled her saying that her neck had been broken and someone tried to strangle her. But as the night proceeded, other horrors were revealed. Lady Lucan claimed that the assailant was none other than her estranged husband and he had killed their nanny, Sandra Rivet, mistaking her for his wife. As per one theory, it was a Thursday and the nanny normally took the day off, so Lucan could have easily confused her for Lady Lucan. Rivet was found bludgeoned to death in the kitchen of the Lucan family home and the murder weapon was a piece of metal pipe wrapped with surgical tape. By the time the police became active, Lucan had driven to Uckfield, East Sussex. He then called his mother and requested her to come to get his children, explaining that there had been an incident at the family home. Lucan had also posted two letters to his friends, but what initially confirmed him as the murderer was his borrowed car from New Haven. It was bloodstained and contained a bandaged lead pipe identical to the one recovered at the crime scene. Additionally, the police retrieved his letters from the recipients, one of which also had blood stains on it. As the police investigation unfolded, Lucan became a question mark vanishing into thin air. The manhunt for the aristocratic murderer captivated all of Great Britain. Had he utilized his contacts to build a new life in a faraway land? or did he commit suicide out of desperation? Despite lengthy investigations, there was no sign of the nobleman. All he left in his wake were, all he left in his wake were conspiracies. Stay tuned as we pick them apart. One theory suggests that Lucan did indeed get help from his strong connections to escape conviction. However, it is also believed that the same well-connected individuals may have later killed him due to personal motivations. One piece of evidence supporting this theory was his strong friendship with the well-known conservationist John Aspinall. Aspinall was also the owner of a posh London club called the Claremont where the elite and gamblers mingled. Here, Lord Lucan was a regular driven by his constant gambling. Behind closed doors, a deceptive scheme Called the Big Edge was at play. This scam involved manipulating cards to give the house an unfair advantage. One chilling theory suggests that Lucan's association with the Claremont Club and his newfound vulnerability could have sealed his fate. Did he know too much about the deceit and manipulation? After Rivet's murder, Lucan may have fled to John Aspinall's circle for help. This is where the story takes a dark turn. Some believe that Aspinall's wildlife park might have hidden the truth. Did Lucan's desperation lead him straight into Aspinall's deadly claws? Fast forward to 2022. 
a new twist develops on Sandra Rivett's 48th death anniversary. Professor Hassan Ugale of Bradford University argues that an 87-year-old man living in an Australian Buddhist community might be none other than Lord Lucan. Conversely, Sandra Rivett's son, Neil Berryman, has been on a never-ending quest for justice. In search of answers, he hired Ugil to use artificial intelligence to analyze images of the guy in Australia alongside Lukens. However, the man denied having any ties with the British noble. To this day, the Metropolitan Police's investigation remains open and the mystery continues to captivate. As the murder's 50th anniversary approaches, the question arises, is Lord Lucan still alive? Comment below and let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed this thrilling tale, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. And remember, stay safe out there.